I'd literally die for these characters. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I do think that this is my favourite of the three Brown Sisters books. I really don't want anyone to hate me for those ratings. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. I cannot believe it is that time of the month again that I'm sitting down to film a monthly wrap up. Here we are. It is the end of May. It's actually the 1st of June that I'm filming this and it's bonkers to me. Like I cannot believe we're nearly halfway through the whole year already. Overall for me, May was a really good reading month. I read 11 books in total. Two of those were audiobooks and two of those were graphic novels. So I feel like I've read a really good variety of stuff. There's a lot of mix of genres in here as well. There's like fantasy and contemporary and YA and romance. Like I really have had like a super varied reading month and I love that for me. Overall as well I had a really good month in terms of ratings as well. Nothing was lower than a three star and I've definitely definitely found a couple of new favourites in this pile so I'm very very excited to talk to you about all of the books that I read in the month of May. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. Now this one only just didn't make it into my April wrap up. Um, I literally I finished this on like the 1st of May and I I just told myself that I wasn't going to rush the book in order to squeeze into a wrap up video. However, I did really, really enjoy this one. I gave it four stars. So this is the first book in a duology by Adeline Grace. And it's like a quest adventure style fantasy with mermaids and magic and mystery and pirates. And it's just really damn good. I'm not going to lie to you. I love anything that's like really high fantasy with like super intricate magic systems but that it's not hard to understand like the map at the front of this book and also the explanations like was enough for me to like know what was going on I just kept referring back to it but I loved it it was so intricate I absolutely adored our mermaid character I've forgotten her name which is going to really bug me but there's a mermaid in this and she is like she is so badass I love her so much and I also really loved Bastion who is like the rogue pirate he's super cool the story is amazing and I'm so excited to delve into book two of this duology so yes this was the first read of May and this was a four star for me next I was lucky enough to receive and read a proof copy of The Couple by Helly Acton which is now out as I'm filming this video and I rated this a big fat five stars I absolutely loved it so you would have heard me speaking about this one quite a lot in a few previous videos now but this book essentially is set in a reverse reality almost where the norm is to be single instead of in a relationship and the concept is just like super super cool i loved it so we're following our main character millie and she works for a dating app called slide and she gets the opportunity to be a part of this new drug campaign where they have created a drug that suppresses the hormone that allows you to fall in love so she is tasked along with her co-worker ben who she may or may not have like a bit of a crush for um to come up with a campaign that's going to sell this drug and it's just it's so much fun it's a romance but it's definitely not smushy at all like it's just lovely i just there's something about Helly Acton's writing that I just absolutely adore. Like, it's so clever. And Ben, who is one of our main protagonists, he was hilarious. Like, I literally was laughing out loud at this book. It was exactly what I needed. Um, if you're ever looking for anything that's just going to make you feel good, this is definitely one of those books. This is a five-star read, and I loved it so much. The next book I read was the March Fairy Loot book, and it was The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, just before I filmed this wrap up, I'd genuinely forgotten that I had read this book. I mean, I've rated this four stars, so like, I did really enjoy it, but now I'm filming this video, I don't remember a whole lot about it. But essentially, we're following our main character, Valeria. She is one of the only survivors of the freeze. So ever since the freeze, she's been on the run from the Tsar, who's determined to imprison everyone who managed to escape. So she works for the Thieves Guild, um, doing odd jobs along with her best friend, Alec. At the very start of this book, Valeria believes that Alec has been brutally murdered. However, she quickly discovers that he is still alive. And in order to buy his freedom, she must lead an expedition into the heart of Knot. However, something very, very sinister lies within the mountain. And this book, it's 
the atmosphere created in it is so like chilling and intense and I actually spoke to someone about this and they said that like it made them feel claustrophobic and that is a really good description of it the way it's written is like amazing in terms of that like it's literally set in a mountain and they can't escape and it's and there's something lurking and all of those factors into play with like the desperation to escape and they're being chased is amazing and i feel like this would have been like a perfect book to read like on a cold winter's night by the fire with a cup of tea without giving too much away i wasn't blown away by the ending i'm just intrigued by it which that's enough to make me want to pick up the second one but i'm definitely not in a hurry for it which is a good job really because it doesn't come out until like the end of next year i did really enjoy it overall though like i say i gave it four stars then i read in the ravenous dark by am strickland i was lucky enough to have a spot on the book tour with pride book tours for this one and oh my goodness this is literally an, a new all-time favorite book i loved it so so much so this book is set in Thanapolis where magic is really closely guarded and if you are one of the rare few who has the ability to possess magic then you are assigned a guardian a, an undead spirit who is your guardian who is to guard you but also controls you and ever since Rovan's father died she has been hiding her magic in order to protect herself from that fate however in order to protect and save her friend's life she must use her magic so she gets discovered very very quickly and she gets taken to the palace where she very quickly may or may not fall for the princess and also the undead spirit that guards her they must join together in a quest to save the napolis honestly i just love this so much the magic is so dark and disturbing but it's also like incredible our main character roven is pansexual we also have non-binary main character who is jafar the romance in this is phenomenal it is a polyamorous relationship and it is just written so well i i, I would literally die for these characters i'm not even joking <laughs> i am obsessed there's four main protagonists and i'm literally obsessed with all of them i don't think i've ever read a book that kept me on the edge of my seat so much so you know when you're reading a book and you're like oh okay I know what's gonna happen I know what's gonna happen you, you, you can see that a mile off and then that thing happens but it's like tricked you because then another thing happens do you know what I mean it's like um a double bluff yeah <laughs> I genuinely cannot fault it the fantasy the representation the magic the plot just everything about it was just it was for me I loved it with my whole heart um and if you haven't guessed already this was a big five star rating from me then i read love frankie by jacqueline wilson i actually read this one as an audiobook now i was very very intrigued to read this one because growing up i was a jacqueline wilson stan i think i well i i don't think i read all of her books but i definitely read a whole lot of them i absolutely loved them and i really really enjoyed this book um i gave it three stars overall jacqueline wilson is a phenomenal writer she handles some really hard topics especially for like middle grade age readers but she handles them really really well so frankie's mum in this book has ms it's handled so well it wasn't mushy or gooey there was a lot of like quite hard topics in this book especially for younger readers as i said um but i really really did enjoy it and i gave it a three star overall the next book i read i also decided to read as an audiobook and it was dear justice by nick stone now this is the companion book to dear martin however you don't necessarily have to have read dear martin to read this one which i really really enjoy so although dear martin handles some really heavy topics she was saying how justice who is the protagonist in that book is very privileged for a black main character and she wanted to write a book about someone who wasn't necessarily as privileged as that and who didn't have it as lucky as justice did um so we're following our main character kwan and he actually he knows justice from when he was a kid so that's like the connection between the two so kwan knows justice um, it says, now Justice studies law at Yale University and Quan sits behind bars at the Regional Youth Detention Centre charged with murder. This was incredible. I gave this one four stars. The narrator of the audiobook was amazing as well. Like it was so emotional. It was just like such a heavy and hard hitting read, but like 
also so important but yeah they're just phenomenal YA reads and I really 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 enjoy Nick Stone's writing it's like it's really moving next again I was really lucky to receive and be able to read an advanced reader copy of Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and I adored this book just wow I haven't actually read the Spin the Dawn duology by this author but now I'm literally desperate to. The writing in this book is some of the most beautiful I have ever read. Like honestly it was stunning. So we're following our main character Shiori who is the princess and she has a secret because she has magic that is forbidden now in Kyata. Now Shiori conceals her magic very well but on the morning of her betrothal ceremony she does lose control and her stepmother notices and her stepmother is a sorceress in her own right and she curses Shiori and her six brothers. She turns her six brothers into cranes and she warns Shiori that she must never speak of it to anybody and for every word that she speaks one of her brothers will die. So Shiori is penniless and alone and she is determined to find her brothers and she goes on a quest with the help of a magical paper bird, a mercurial dragon and the very boy that she fought so hard not to marry. The magic is beautiful but it's definitely not a centerpiece of the story. Uh, we really are following Shiori and her love for her six brothers and the fact that she literally would do anything to save them and the fact that Shiori can't speak in this in the majority of this book because she is cursed it just adds a whole level to the book. Her relationship with um, the other characters is just, it's amazing. And the paper bird especially, like I love that whole element. It's so stunning. And I cannot wait to get my hands on a finished copy of this one because it honestly is just one of the most beautiful books ever. I gave this five stars. Next up, a lot of you are gonna be very, very happy because I read volume one and volume two of Heartstopper. So I have got a vlog in the works where I'm going to be reading all of the Heartstoppers for the very first time. Obviously I've only read the first two so far so like the vlog isn't ready to be uploaded but that one will be going up hopefully as soon as possible uh, where you'll be able to watch like my full reactions to reading these. I feel like the hype may have tarnished this one for me a little bit. I really, really try not to let the hype get to me, but like, it, it's very hard to avoid the hype for these two books, well, for this whole series. I've ended up giving volume one 3.5 stars and volume two four stars. I really don't want anyone to hate me for those ratings because I know how much these graphic novels mean to people and I'm in no way bashing that whatsoever. I thought they were amazing, I thought the representation was fantastic and I did think the way that they were written was just was amazing. I loved Nick and Charlie and I cannot wait to finish the other volumes and then also continue on and read This Winter and Nick and Charlie, the novellas. I feel like just because I'm not giving them a five star rating it doesn't mean I didn't love them, like I did really enjoy them. I think part of it for me is a graphic novel thing because obviously there's nowhere near as much story in here as there would be in like a book written in prose. I don't even want to say I expected more because I didn't. Like the story was cute, but it also has, especially in volume two, like some deeper elements. Like I did really, really enjoy it. I don't know. Like there just wasn't that like thing for me that would have allowed me to rate them any higher than what I have. Then I read Actual Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the third and final book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. This was so highly anticipated for me. I really did not want these books to end. I've been sort of putting this one off since it was released, um, but I'm so, so glad that I picked it up and I did a fantastic buddy read with Kia over on Instagram. In this book, we're following Eve Brown, who is the youngest of the Brown sisters. And essentially her parents have just had enough of her starting things and quitting them and giving up and not like fully driving herself and trying to succeed in something. So she gets in the car and she drives and she doesn't really think, she just drives and she ends up at Castell Cottage which is a little B&B &B, and she gets out of the car thinking that she'll be able to get something to eat there but actually sees a flyer advertising a job position to be the chef and she just goes in and has an interview and it's it's an enemy to lovers story and it's it's just so good. I do think that this is my favourite of the three 
brown sisters books i just think it was the cozy vibes of like being set in a and b in the countryside and like being a chef i just i really really loved it and eve brown has always been my favorite sister so like i loved being able to see her vulnerable side and getting to know her a whole lot more i just loved it so much the dynamics between eve and jacob are just like so good talia hibbert i i just love her one of the most cute wholesome romances i've ever read and i just i loved it so much like it just brought me so much joy and i gave this one five stars and the final book that i read in may which i actually finished last night is not my problem by kiara smith i'm very excited to have read this one as part of a pride book tour as well my stop on the tour is the 7th of june so be sure to look out for that over on my instagram i'll link it down below so this book follows our main character Idine, and she is a rule breaker she doesn't she isn't doing great in school she has a really tough home life her mum is an alcoholic or a recovering alcoholic um, who is prone to have quite a few relapses she is really really struggling um, and she has a lot of problems and Maeve who is our second protagonist is a super ambitious hard-working perfectionist like she is the complete opposite of Idine and it comes across that she has the perfect home life her dad is the principal of the school um, Maeve has it all basically basically Idine sort of creates a little business where she will help people out in exchange for a favour in return. She helps people with things that they couldn't necessarily do for themselves. Some of them being quite risque in terms of like, she can get into a lot of trouble if she gets caught. And then the people that she is helping owe her one. And she'll basically do anything to avoid her own problems and just to fix everyone else's. Similarly to Kiara Smith's other book, there are some quite heavy topics in this book, but as an author she's just incredible and she deals with these topics in the most amazing ways and this book was literally laugh out loud hilarious but also like so vulnerable and emotional at points as well this is sapphic so Ideen and Maeve are both lesbians but it's not a romance really um at all like there is a subplot of romance which is fantastic and I loved it but it definitely is on the back burner and definitely following more of the escapades of what these characters get up to and their friendships and their vulnerabilities. It was brilliantly done. I absolutely loved it. I only finished it last night, so I'm debating between a four and a five star rating. Um, I think I'm going to land on a 4.5 just because I did really, really enjoy it. So that concludes the 11 books that I read in the month of May. I am super happy with what I read in May. Uh, I feel like it was a really strong reading month. The favourite book that I read in May was definitely In the Ravenous Dark. I just loved it so much if you couldn't tell from my rambling previously. Let me know down in the comments what your favourite book was that you read in May. If you did enjoy this video please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel it really does mean the world to me and i post bookish content regularly thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you all in the next one bye